Modified Newtonian dynamics, or MOND, is an alternative theory of gravity designed to explain some of the anomalous motions of galaxies without invoking dark matter. It's the invention of Mordechai Milgram, of the Wiseman Institute of Science in Israel, who published it in 1983. In Newton's theory of gravity, the gravitational attraction between any two objects with mass varies as the inverse square of the distance between them. In Mond, Newton's inverse square law applies only where gravity is strong. Where it's weak, there's a more gradual linear drop-off with distance. Some physicists have been drawn to this idea because it avoids supposing that there's an entirely new and dominant form of matter in the universe, the nature of which remains unknown. The conventional assumption among scientists is that dark matter accounts for 85% of the total mass of the universe, yet the fact that its existence is hypothesized based solely on its gravitational effects and not on any direct observations is problematic. What exactly is dark matter? There are no shortage of ideas, but the notion that most of the mass of the universe is of an unknown nature is unpalatable to some. Another potential advantage of MOND is that it may point the way to a successful merger of the general theory of relativity with quantum mechanics. To summarize then, according to Mond, while the familiar conventional force of gravity gets weaker in proportional to the square of the distance, there's another form of gravity whose strength diminishes more slowly, declining only as one over the distance. One of the problems with Mond is that it contradicts the well-tested predictions of relativity, and so it doesn't work well in situations where objects are moving close to the speed of light, or under high accelerations. Because of this, it hasn't been able to say anything useful about, for example, black holes, or how the universe came into being in the Big Bang. In 2004, Jacob Beckenstein of the Hebrew University in Jerusalem suggested a way around this uh, issue. In Mond, a key parameter is the acceleration A0, below which gravity supposedly switches from its weaker to its stronger form. To fix Mond's clash with general relativity, Beckenstein brought in twin fields, the first giving rise to conventional gravitational phenomena, the second serving as the arena for phenomena involving the other fundamental forces of nature electromagnetism and the strong and weak nuclear forces. Beckenstein has claimed that his theory is consistent with general relativity, Newtonian gravity and MOND. It reduces, he said, to Einstein's theory at high speeds and accelerations well above A0, to Newtonian gravity at low speeds and accelerations above A0, and to MOND at accelerations below A0. Mond has been quite successful at explaining the anomalous rotation of individual galaxies, the fact that their outer parts rotate faster than expected based on the amount of visible matter they contain. Where it's been less effective is in accounting for the motions of galaxies in clusters. These are such that even if we go along with Mond, the mass of galaxy clusters is still typically twice what can be accounted for by the presence of ordinary matter. So when it comes to clusters of galaxies, Mond doesn't do away with the need for dark matter. Mond has also run into trouble because of observations made in 2006 of a pair of colliding galaxies called the Bullet Cluster. Astronomers measured the distribution of mass, both in the form of stars and gas in the cluster, and mapped the inferred density of dark matter using gravitational lensing. If you favor Mond, you'd expect the missing mass to be centered on regions of visible mass which experience accelerations lower than A0. If you're in the dark matter camp, on the other hand, you'd expect the dark matter to be offset from the visible mass because the halos of the two colliding clusters, where the dark matter is presumed to reside, would pass through each other whilst the cluster gas would interact and end up at the centre. An offset is clearly seen in the observations. 
which tends to support the case for dark matter. But the debate rumbles on. There's another galaxy cluster called El Gordo, the fat one, the existence of which, according to some researchers, isn't compatible with standard theories of cosmology. According to these theories, galaxy clusters form at the nodes of filaments of dark matter within the cosmic web. This formation mechanism implies that they should all grow at approximately the same average rate as matter falls into the nodes. But El Gordo is unusually massive for its age. It weighs just over 2,000 trillion times as much as the Sun, and we're seeing it as it was 6.2 billion years ago, about a billion years after it formed from the merger of two smaller clusters. New simulations suggest that to replicate El Gordo's properties, these smaller clusters, which should, according to standard theories, be filled with dark matter, must have collided with a velocity of at least 2,500 kilometers per second. This is uncomfortably fast for gravitational models of dark matter to explain, but given the possible errors in measurement, not out of the question. Only further observations will decide whether MOND or some other theory based on modifications to Newtonian gravity have a future. For now, the prevailing view is that dark matter holds the key to explaining how galaxies and galaxy clusters formed and behave. <laughs>